So of the arpeggios he played, two really stood out to me as sounding great and I've really enjoyed playing them. One was this one. And uh, you were playing that one off of the blues uh, section, the chord five in G. Uh, and uh, it's, a, it's a very extended D major chord. But because the blues is such a mystery to me, the first thing I did was went, well, hang on a minute, uh, what are the actual notes? And what I notice is they're all the notes of uh, G major minus uh, the third degree of the scale, the B. It means also that it can only be uh, G major. There, there are no, uh, there's not a second sharp in it and there's no flats and the, the C is natural, not sharp. It can only be G. So the first thing I did was I thought, well, hang on a minute. It doesn't have to be blues. It could be anything in G, couldn't it? Uh, the other thing I thought was if you count it and you go one and a, two and a, three and a, four and a. That's the kind of obvious way to do it. Triplets, one and a, two and a, three and a, four and a. But what if you didn't do it in triplets? What if you did it in 16th notes? Then you'd get one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, little bit on the end there. And if you do that and you look at each crotchet or quarter note, uh, then you get not a, a full uh, a triad, but you get something else in it as well. So the, in the first case you get, you get a C. Well C added to, oh, bloody hell I'm getting another text. Uh, C added to a D major is um, uh, a, a D dominant, so we've got a D dominant there. Uh, then the, the next one is uh, a, a, an E, a G, a D and a F sharp. Well, wait a minute, if you take those notes, we're right back down to um, the previous uh, arpeggio in the previous section which is the uh, E minor seven add nine. Uh, the only difference being that in this particular case, we've got the B and in, in the, the, the blues one, the B is missing, but uh, that's okay. The seventh is still gonna determine what chord that is. The third crotchet, um, it, oh, by the way, that's how I would play the E minor seven add nine and I play it all the time. I have got so much mileage out of it. And, uh, and I use it in, in, in ballads and ah, oh, it's just a wonderful, wonderful chord. Um, so that might be why I like the other, uh, <laughs> The other, the other arpeggio so much. Um, yeah, so the, the next one, the chord uh, beat number three, the notes are A minor seven, uh, A, C, E, G. I don't know why I'm telling you this. It's like, you don't know, of course you know that. And then beat four would be back, uh, brings us full circle to our D dominant. Uh, so the thing that I've prepared for you is basically going, uh, starting on the D and it goes D, D, Two, three, four. Well, we have one bar of um, our lovely uh, E minor nine, uh, E minor seven add nine. Uh, and so for that, I thought we'd play a little bit of that. So I'll just uh, unmute the drums. Uh, hopefully the red light won't put me off and I'll let you hear it. Two, three, and.
anything else I wanted to mention about that. Um, so do we agree that uh, it actually sounds okay with those chords on those beats uh, and uh, a bar of a bar of that to follow? I, I, I am absolutely confident it, it does, even though I haven't actually sequenced up the uh, the chords yet. <laughs> if it turns out it doesn't work, uh, then I won't submit this video. Um, so that's one thing. But then the other thing is that I'd said this. Uh, Oh yeah, let me just mention also, uh, these arpeggios can sound a little bit like arpeggios, but as soon as you do the, the, the phrasing lesson, uh, the, the, you know, one of the very last lessons, and, uh, and you talk about sort of mixing things up a little bit, and you apply that to the arpeggios, and, and you get that. That does not sound nearly such an exercise. It just sounds like a. I think to my ears that sounds like a really, a really excellent uh, little run, and I'm certain that I'll be putting that into song somewhere, uh, or, or, or or modifying it slightly uh, for song. So thank you, thank you for that. I there's no way on earth that I would have come up with that uh, without these lessons. Um, so finally, the other thing I just want to show you was um, this. Um, this arpeggio, being only notes of G minus the B, made me think, well, hang on a minute. It should work over any uh, chords that are diatonic to the key of G. So uh, I thought we could just get the drums back on again and uh, have a listen and see if that works. Two, one, two, a three, and... <laughs> I don't know if anything I've said is uh, is actually of use to you, but I really feel it is uh, it, it is to me. So if you can get some use out of that, absolutely brilliant. But I'll probably be uh, slapping a bit of this, that, and the next uh, thing into into future songs and whatnot. I'm very excited. Uh, so I shall go and do a little bit of Keith Wyatt's uh, lessons and see if he can demystify the blues for me. And uh, who knows. Uh, I might be uh, throwing a bit of that into a Keith Wyatt uh, lesson. But uh, once again, thank you very much indeed, Paul. Uh, if, uh, if you'd like to video respond to that, then I will look forward to receiving it most, uh, most wonderfully. Thank you. <laughs>